In today's chess video, we'll revisit the romantic era of chess and look at one of the finest games in chess history. It was played between Alexander Hoffman and Alexander Petrov, who was the inventor of the Petrov's defense. Before starting off, I would like to thank Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Alright, this game is known as Petrov's Immortal and it starts with a king's pawn opening. Then the knights are out and we have the Italian game on the board. After bishop c5, this turns into the Juco piano opening. Now here, Hoffman goes for the main line, which is c3. Then knight f6 and white plays the aggressive move d4, going for the center attack. Black takes the pawn and white pushes e5, going after the knight. In modern days, most players will probably play a move like d5, threatening the bishop. But Petrov decides to move his knight to e4, inviting white to play bishop d5. And he's getting his own knight trapped. There's no way to save this knight. Yeah, probably he can play f5, but that is very boring. In those days, 1844 I'm talking about, players were very fearless in their approach. If there was a sacrifice to be made, they would just go for it. And that's exactly what Petrov did. He sacrificed his knight by taking on f2. This attacks the queen and rook, so the king is forced to take the knight. Then he throws a discovered check. White could have played conservatively by going king f1, but as I told you, we are in 1844 and the players in those days don't play safe. They don't go back, they are always on the front foot and that's what makes these games very exciting to watch. I believe Hoffman also thought that going back would maybe block up this rook completely. So he decided to go to g3 and it looks okay because there are not many attacks at the moment since all these squares are safely covered. By the way, this particular opening variation was named after one of India's first chess players and author, Gulam Qasim. So coming back to the game, Petrov grabs another pawn. White takes back. And now if you evaluate this position, White has a knight and a pawn in exchange for four pawns, which is actually okay. I know this king kind of looks shaky, but White has an open game with all these pieces ready to launch an attack. So it's even Stevens. The queens haven't yet moved, but this is already set up for a really wild game. Anyway, black maneuvers his knight to attack the exposed king. He also eliminates the threat of bishop f7 check by taking the d5 square away from the white queen. White isn't much concerned and he jumps forward with his own knight, putting pressure on f7. This seems a little over ambitious. Probably he could have played a solid move like queen c2, guarding this square and attacking the bishop. But again, this is the romantic era of chess, so expect the unexpected. And on that note, as expected, I request you to hit the like button right now. It really motivates me. Okay, so white played knight g5. Petrov went ahead and picked up the bishop. White can't take back because then he would end up in trouble after queen takes with a check. Therefore, in this position, white tries a trick. He takes on f7, forking the queen and rook. You'd have to do something about this knight, so white was expecting him to maybe capture with the king. But that's not great because white can take the knight give a check and pick up the bishop as well. So what do you play as black in this position? Look, we've reached a critical point in the game and here's where Petrov played an absolutely incredible move. Can you find it? Well, believe it or not, the most accurate move, which Petrov also played, is the short castle. This is probably the best castling move of all time. Some of you might also wonder, is this even legal? Look, this rook is attacked, but as long as these squares in the middle aren't covered and your king is not in check, you can castle. So that's a legal move. So basically, he saved the rook to sacrifice the queen. But now, black is setting up a cunning little trap. Let's see if it works. White has to take the queen, otherwise he just loses his knight. Also, for example, if white takes the knight, then he ends up in serious trouble because of these multiple attacks on this vulnerable king. Therefore, white is compelled to capture the queen. And that's exactly what Petrov wanted to see. Here's where the fun begins. He starts his assault by bringing in the dark squared bishop, bishop f2 check. This was the main idea behind castling, to bring that rook to the open file to support the bishop. The king is forced to move to a square where it can now be attacked by the other bishop. That's a discovered check. If he blocks with this pawn, then knight f4 wraps up the game right away. Therefore, in this position, blocking with this pawn is the only option. What next? Look, if you allow him even one move, he'll move this pawn forward, stopping the knight from coming to f4 and making way for the king to step back into safety. Therefore, Petrov checks him straight away with the knight. King g4 is the only move. Now what do you play? See, as black you can't afford to let the king go back to his shelter. 
So you'll have to finish him off right here, right now. Now, if you give h5 check, then he can run away like this. And if you give a check this way, you lose this very important bishop. So what do you do? There's only one good move in this position. And let me give you a hint. It's not a check. Did you find it? Well, the crushing move which Petrov plays is knight takes on e6. Even though it's not a check, black is cutting off the f file and preventing the king from running away. Now this knight is anyways trapped, so white decides to go for an exchange. Bishop e6 check. All these squares are covered, so the king is forced to come down. And now can you find the mate in 3? Well, first we have rook f5 check. King g4 is the only legal move. Then we have h5 check. King is pushed to the corner. And ultimately, black strikes the final nail in the coffin with rook f3. That's a double check. In fact, it's a checkmate and white is finished. Look how beautifully Petrov formed this mating net to trap the white king. That's, that's truly amazing. All right, so it's puzzle time. In this position, it is white's turn and you need to find the best move for white. Well, if you can find the answer, share it in the comment section below. Let's see how many of you can solve this. All right, now let me tell you about Squarespace. Squarespace.com is a powerful online platform to easily create and manage your very own website. It helps you connect with your audiences as well through email communications, through members only content and many other great features. You can also push your website content to all your social media channels. Plus, you get tons of useful data about your website traffic and it's all very quick and easy. So, if you're thinking of creating a website, use this link for a free trial of Squarespace. And if you like it, you can get a special 10% discount for Chess Talk viewers. So, go check out the link in the description box below.